Talk Rugby podcast. As you've been aware, Truck is happening everywhere. Abel Musoke, who completes his tackle. Magomo, yet again, finds Angulo. And the offload is complete. The intercept goes to Paul Masandi. He will run. Welcome to this edition of Let's Talk Rugby. My name is Joseph Dungu, your host, and with me are two gentlemen who have very good knowledge about the beautiful game. Um, on my right is Peter Obong, Obong. I'm sorry about that, but um, I'll let them, I'll give each of them a chance to introduce themselves in a manner they deem fit. On my left is Alan Musoke, a legend. Veteran, he's played rugby for both uh, the sevens and fifteen outfit. Um, yes, I'll start with. Just to reintroduce myself, Peter Fong, not the other name. Oh, well, he used. <laughs> imagine, yeah. So um, uh, <clears throat> I've been involved in rugby mostly as a writer, blogger, journalist. Uh, but I guess the all encompassing word you'd use. Is a few, sh- a few, sh- a few. Ah, what's that word? That's jam. That word. The a word few jam. Shanando. A few shanado. A few shanado. Yes. Something like that. I'm not so sure about the pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah. A few to Just to just to break it down, just someone who has interest in a particular topic and is well informed about it. So, yeah. And I work in the logistics industry, but my kingly pastime is rugby. Ah, perfect. What better way to introduce yourself than Peter has done? Alan, take it away. Put your knees down. I put your knees down. I am Alan Musoke. Yes, I've uh, played for only one rugby club, and that's uh, the Cobs. Yeah, uh, played for Uganda as well. Coached the Cobs as well. Coached the Uganda women. So, been in the game and been involved in the game for close to 30 years now. Well, Coach so, Super Rugby. Well, wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's, so it's, 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 it's been an amazing ride. And, and yes, rugby is a passion. It's good that it's back. So Saturday mornings are a little bit different now because you are not normally nursing the hangover of Friday yeah. night. Yeah. And for us, there's no tension anymore except when your team walks on too. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting and exciting. Saturday is here, rugby day. Ah, yeah. Very good introductions from both guys. I must say these guys have a lot of experience. We are going to hear from them, get to know a lot. So, kicking it off with the sevens, guys are in Dubai already. Uh, they play on second and third, that's this weekend. I think um, it will, they, they, much as we may not watch them on screen playing, but I think they may not um, play to their best because they are just returning. That's my opinion anyway. That's what I think. They may not play really to their best, and it's sad that we're not going to get media coverage for those games. Well, um, about playing to their best, I don't think that is what Tolbert took them there to do. I don't think he has a half-half uh, kind of engagement in him. Only because, yes, they uh, could not be to their physical strength, but he still wants to test and see how, how they're doing. So I'm sure he's going to be a little bit of a, of a sergeant at arms. Mm-hmm. He's going to just push them to their limits only to see also to see how well they're doing. Uh, it's sad that Byron couldn't make the cut. Um, he's been off injury, so maybe they have given him enough time to get some game time. Actually Byron was supposed to go to Dubai to travel with the team but he had exams. So oh, that's oh. the only reason oh, as to why he stayed. Okay. Nkore maybe also had a chance to be included on in the team mm-hmm. but he has a um, law, the bar. I yes. think he's at Law Development Center. Mm. I don't know whether at Makere or Mbarara, but that's it for Nkore. Then uh, we see Aredo getting back back on the team. Actually, he has mi- he had missed a couple of um, outings, outings yeah, yeah. From, but he's back on the team. Uh, just to expound on what Alan said, I think, and what you said, um, I think if you look, 
if you look at the return to play, starting from the 15s, if you saw, obviously England ended fifth, like in the Six Nations. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you have to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no offense, bro, but, as well, eh? but, but yeah, the, angle, <laughs> the angle I was looking at, if you looked at England from the beginning, they were one of the uh, sides that were struggling with fitness. If you watched from the beginning, they, they, and, and, and just to talk about the sevens, to bring that to the sevens, I think it's affected many people. Mm -hmm. So maybe the standards would not be to still be competitive, but the standards may not be to the to, level. Yeah, yeah, but I think that is exactly what this tournament is about to get them prepared, you know, for the Olympic qualifiers and those probably going for the series. Yeah, the challenge series. I think yeah. we're, always, we're all excited. We'll just keep following on social media for the scores to take away notifications yeah. and all that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's sad that, um, that we can't be able to stream it because. I mean, it's Easter weekend here, mm -hmm. so everybody will basically have a lot of time on their hands. So it's, 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 it's sad that, that we can't. Yeah. And just to talk about the selection, what you said, I, I like uh, what's happened with the seven because I think they've had a, a team of probably about 18, 19 players that, that they have used. Come. Yeah, but over the last three, four years, They've had a, a core team of probably about 17 to 19 players that they've always picked up, picked from. So yes. I think that's uh, a way of building chemistry mm. yeah. over time. Yeah, know. true. Uh, Solomon Okia is also back yeah. to the seven squad and he traveled. Um, I think no, he's still okay. going under. Can Okia okay, get some minutes? Uh, because he's had, he's had a blistering uh, run. But I don't know. I think local clubs. Yeah, well, he, he, it's really about confidence because... If he, he normally gets two or three minutes towards the end of possibly every game, and good thing he made the squad. Let's hope that he can now build that consistency. It will be interesting to see him it will be mad. It will be interesting to see him uh, play. I see him more as a center though, and, really? and not yeah. Uh, well, there are times when Michael needs a break, uh, and I don't see that person who can ably replace yeah. Michael at the center yeah. position. If you need Wills, yeah. if you because have him, if you have him and Okia... And because Okia, okay, he can beat his defender up front, yeah. yeah. He's so, always uh, done that, he has uh, that. Yes. Because uh, I thought, because South America, I, I thought uh, probably you might follow that format again, because if I'm not mistaken, Michael was shuffling between center and, and prop. And the prop. Yeah, yeah, he propped a bit. I think, actually, as with the advance of age, I think he makes a very good prop in sevens. Well, let's wait. Let's wait for what uh, the weekend has to offer from the guys in at the seventh tournament, Emirates, Dubai, something to Dubai, yes. So, still on social media, a lot has been going on. Uh, player, man of the match awards, yes, this and that. Man of the match award walking away with a man of the match walking away six beers, yes, really from now special stout. And guys are a bit um, complaining. Guys are not so happy with that. They expect more because. Guys would actually prefer the medals, but um, it's really tricky. I don't know what you guys think, but from a sponsor's perspective, the sponsor may not have the cash to inject, or maybe they have the cash, but they prefer to, I don't know, maybe give their, some of their product, the now special stout, so it's easier for them to give the beers than to partner with cash for the medals. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's always, that's always, the, it, the medals have always been a, 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 a tricky um, angle to look at and from the UG rugby fan zone of course we've over the last five or six years ensured that we uh, supply and do the make the fans experience a different one and also uh, select and award the man of the match I uh, that's not going to be any different this year that's the the season began a little bit abruptly it was just I don't think the sponsor was ready to to be able to provide all the equipment that they might No, but um, Alan, yeah. when you, if you look at it, I hosted Ramsey here, and I asked him this very same question. What, why are we playing a league that has no sponsor, really? Why? And if, if this is how rugby is going to continue, I think we are taking a huge steep downward slope, yeah? It's going to be so bad for rugby, because some of these boys who play rugby look up to such awards, yeah? They look up to... Some of them don't look up to beer, because there are a couple of players who don't really fancy the beer. I think... The people in charge of lobbying and sourcing for all that should do. They, I think they should strive to work harder, mm. so that they avail some of these basics. I, I'll call them basics because we are used to them, yeah, True. and they're not coming. 
I would like to uh, cut the union some slack. I think we've come out of an extraordinary situation, both in our private lives and in our professional lives. You know, people are being laid off. The, the, the whole pandemic thing has created uh, a challenging situation for many. So just like the rest of us, uh, the union has been affected. So the sponsors, of course, Alan is more vast in that. Uh, I really don't have the details, but uh, I, I would. I think worldwide. Uh, I, I think let's not be too hard on the union in in, in this regard. Uh, like what you're saying, going back to playing the, the the league without a sponsor. I'll just have to take you back a bit. Our neighbours, Kenya. I don't think I've had a league sponsor in like two decades or more. Okay, so I'm not saying that is the standard we should follow, but I'm just saying uh, I think it's under. We should try and understand because of the pandemic uh, there are certain challenges that have come out with sp sponsorship. Peter, have you played rugby? No, not beyond the house. Yeah, behind the, the house survival and rugby. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, okay, but so okay, you've played rugby and yeah. you know what it means for a player to work hard on the field and expect that award at the end because they can hang it in their sitting uh, room or keep it from my side. That's, that should not be the reason that drives someone to the rugby field. Okay. Um, the accolade and the recognition is worthwhile. Yes, um, I played rugby and I've, I think I got three Man of the Match medals, but they were only at national team level. Only? Wow. Only. I find that only, because, be only because by the time we played, mm -hmm. there was nothing like recognition for mm -hmm. Man of the Match oh. at a league game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but that is not the reason why. So it was we all about your guys coming tell you where, so hey, you stood out. The first thing that you need to do is play for your club and play to win. Everything else wow. is, is really, really extraordinary. And getting back from where you've been, we are not going to wait for a sponsor to play rugby. If that's going to be the case, we'd have stopped Uganda Cup a long time ago. Yes. Because we haven't had... You understand? Yeah, yeah. Um, have, not having a sponsor should not stop us from playing. The better our product is, the easier it is to sell. So if players are going to come and not give a hundred percent, then they just know that whoever is watching does not see the need to inject or attach their brand to that league or to that particular sport. So, uh, as players in this current age, let's make our let's get ourselves fit. Let's get ourselves to the level that somebody would actually want to come and invest in you. I'm it should actually start from the other side. So oh, we yeah. have to disagree with, uh, with Alan Musoke. Uh, we don't before you, uh, <laughs> first of all, first go on. Uh, with all due respect, uh, I, I think uh, what ev everything Alan has said is true, but uh, we can't live in utopia, mm -hmm. you know that. Eh? And uh, he's talking about a generation when he played a lot, has, a lot of what have passed under the bridge. Mm. So there are new standards we have to look up to. So in as much as he's right, yes. uh, he also needs to accommodate uh, some of the concerns the players have. Mm. And let's make it clear, there is no comparison between a, 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 a meadow and six beers. Yes. Yeah. It's not up for discussion. Absolutely. It's really clear. That, yeah. So our hope is, uh, I, I, I think the union has had this. I think the feedback will be taken. My hope is... The feedback will be taken uh, to the uh, yeah yeah and back to the sponsor and hopefully these things will be settled in retrospect. Yeah, yeah. and to just before before you were speaking, I wanted to ask something because there is a difference between um, Alan's generation True. and the current generation that has the new because Louis Rika will always tweet wanting to see his medal, wanting yeah. asking for his medal. Yes. So, and what difference do you see? What differences do you see? Because personally, these guys were more. Uh, how can I call it? They had that soft push, yeah? You guys had the soft push. But now you see some of the young players need a lot of, uh, a lot of um, handshakes and all that. You get, you know, the whole sagas are going between clubs. Yeah. If a guy is not cashed, he won't play. Yeah. Yeah, much as maybe it happened back then. But guys then really loved the sport, yeah? And I see a bit of, much as maybe these guys have a bit more talent, these guys were really, it's kind of rugged and they were always just pushing. But this, New guys have a bit more flair, flair, flair talent, and they are quite exciting. So, 
That's, um, that's okay. Yeah, truth be told, um, one of the things that we possibly, uh, as UG rugby fans, on um, are going to step up from this week is actually recognizing these people on all the channels um, a lot more because you realize that we have had uh, we are in two game week four and we haven't actually posted any man of the match pick. And for us, that's that's just a loophole. Well. The recognition will come first, and I think uh, it's something that, that everybody else needs to do. Um, that said, I haven't seen the actual clubs tweet their man of the match. That's very weird, have you? No, I haven't. Yeah, okay. so... But, but yeah, the you know, there, it means that yeah, everyone that. is relaxed So, so why, are we, why are we pushing the union to a corner when we are not even recognizing our teammates? So, yes, the, the cry is valid. The medals and uh, like I say, we're going to work out something with with our sponsors because you see, it's not free. Um, the accolade is not free in terms of the purchase. So for now, can we just take the simple recognition and and sign of gratitude from our title sponsor in your drink to go and share with your friends? The, it's it's about it's about the act. I've given you a, a six pack of Nile Stout. Not for you to drink alone, but if you don't consume alcohol, can you share with people your achievement? Can you celebrate your achievement in that small way as the medal comes, which you're going to hang up um, in, in, your, in your cabinet? Yes, yes. And then, every club has a Twitter handle. But like I say, you're waiting for the union to pin up your man of the match, and yet, you even in-house... And not exactly. celebrating your own because we are the biggest stakeholders of the game as clubs, by the way. Yeah, we are the so, yeah. so I believe I believe we can we can take strides. I'm not I'm not taking away the fact that 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 the, that the medals are not are not available, but can we start doing the small things right, which is celebrating in house first, celebrating a small achievement, and when you get that six pack, can you go? Celebrate and be happy about it. There's a, there's a picture I like seeing on, on social media. There's this kid who is the third and they're raising up they their, are their third. And the person who's first is, is not even grumbling sure. and maybe has a sad face. And that's exactly what we're doing. So uh, for those, uh, those, those people who have won that recognition, can you go first and blow about it on your own? I mean, you're walking up there for that interview. Call your friend to come and take a picture of you post it on your handle, let your team celebrate you, yeah. let everybody celebrate you first. That accolade is actually going to come. Yeah, let it be a special moment. Yeah, I, and, I, and I think we can, it, can start, it can really, really start from inside, as opposed to having somebody from outside who's a union coming in to celebrate for you. Peter, where do you think it goes wrong? And as a person, what do you think you would have done better? Or what, what would you do better as uh, the union? Or if you are in place to uh, mine would be radical. I think uh, <laughs> if I was if I was the union and uh, I don't have the funds to buy medals and things like that, I'll just come clean and say, guys, look, you know what? We have no medals and this. I'll even cut out the beer and just say, you know what? But we shall give name recognitions for people who have excelled in the in the different games and that's it. But I think there was a vacuum in communication. Mm -hmm. And there were expectations oh, from the yeah from the clubs, the stakeholders, and all that. So they were caught unaware. So I think the union could have handled the communication better. That's that's what I think. But uh, for my approach, I've already told you. I but you see, we just, keep I'll just we keep, come clean. We keep and saying these things: communication, communication, true. Communication. Union is a bit slow. May, much as they may communicate as well, but they, they may not improve. deliver. Action. It be pathetic. Very improved. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it, was, it was ridiculous. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was, it's the fact. I think four or five years ago, it was totally, totally. You getting information from the union was like squeezing water out of a stone. It was it terrible. Was yeah. yeah. But it's good. We also recognize the power of social media because through yeah. tweets, guys, uh, hashtags, and all. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We realized that union was triggered and they had to respond. Yeah. We're waiting for the action, though. Mm -hmm. It begins from clubs. <laughs> yeah, true. Very true. Actually, even clubs had a bit of that. I think there were f probably two, four clubs that were doing their, their communication well, but now I see all clubs are buzzing. Yeah, yeah. Even, even the, 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 the second tier clubs are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the second buzzing. tier uh, uh, are <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, no>, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just like that hashtag, not, not to. Um, mm -hmm. 
put down rubs or something. But guys, uh, guess what? This league has been very interesting, yeah? Okay. Coming back from a lockdown, we are seeing some clubs beating others yeah, unexpectedly. Then, then we're also seeing uh, people drinking beer from Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, was, who was it? Oh, well, it just was it. Like he he just I was that in my head. So, so Joseph, what that, that day? Day? Okay, let me, <laughs> let me ask a question. So how right. did that man's doubt taste? It was rich in malt. The blend was really Kimbo slice kind of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Kimbo. I have a very good friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, think, do you think you went out looking for that try? Just to pin you. I think it did because when we were having lunch. Being a prop, it definitely did. It definitely did. Well, we were just to spite you. When we were having lunch at Mugoles, yes. Ijonga told me, Ha! Katwis nakarawe. Genda mo ompira. Genda wachi mo ompira. You have to drink. So I'm like, ah! But anyway. That was hard. So first describe the try. The Kimbo was trying. Because I think you are Makere, yes. Yes, I was at Makere. Because you drank from the I was at Makere. I think um, it came from an Eighthman peak. Okay. The Eighthman went white. Yes. Was tackled, yeah. then Kim, then the scrum scrum half Olenge gave a short ball, quick short ball mm. to Kimbo. So Kimbo scored on the line, but then I think the referee had not awarded it yeah. earlier enough. So it's like whoa, Udugo carries the ball and actually scores. But later on, the TJ calls back the referee and says Kimbo had scored. So the try was awarded to Kimbo. And guess the moment really, you were like, oh my like, goodness, dungu dungu. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Dave, uh, <laughs> Dave, guys, I'm dead. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, there were a few shockers. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Rain was beating Mongas. Yeah. Guys. Whoa. Guys. Almost everyone had written off Rain. Like, they know we're going for Rain. No, I know. No, I know. Uh, because I was at, I was, I, I activated that game. So, I, it started the usual Adrian Waswa. I'm not surprising Rhinos had the first penalty shot. And uh, Chiramo missed it, so I had a loose comment that maybe he's left his kicking boots at home. And um, before we know it, Adrian Waswa um, also gets uh, shot at it, and he nails the first points in the game. And it clearly looked like Mongas are going to have their way because had a bigger pack. Rhinos backpedaled through the pack for the entire game. For the entire game. Every time to be engaged, their ball, Mongas' ball, they are just doing the, the moonwalk. All yeah. through, but uh, but they kept in it. What because happened to the piston, the engine piston? You <laughs> see that <laughs> the last video where they are yeah. Yeah. triggering uh, pops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the engine piston. Uh, that was a formidable Rhinos uh, forward line at the time. I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, very strong. Right, but yeah. it rained anyway, so yeah. Well, it was. Yeah, yeah. So it was. It was, and and Rhinos just kept plugging away. Uh, I think the Mongas just got irritated. Uh, I thought they flung the ball out too much and Rhinos combo defense, kudos to them. It was really, really brilliant because they would get to the first side very quickly and they will pile numbers. So I would think all round, uh, in open play, the Rhinos actually put up a very, very good fight. Then all of a sudden they get a break and it's a two-point game and they score it. And... Well, we all know, okay, fine, seven-pointer, Mongas is down, and we're about ten minutes to the end of their game, they're going to come back, and attack after attack, Mongas would get to the five, give away a penalty for holding on, or handling error here, and that's when they actually realize that, hey, we need to keep this ball tight, so they keep it tight, and just get to the try line, and somehow, Rhinos manage to either steal it, or yeah. Mongas have a a handling error there. And yeah, Guys on social media like Marshall should should be resting right now. He's he's had a very tough start, but uh, his spirit okay. gave back. Uh, before we talk about the big one, the Lions Cup at Chadondo, Buffaloes managed to oh yeah to tackle. I, uh, um, well, I missed both both games uh, uh, last weekend. I had uh, personal engagement, so I thought she was getting married. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, of course, I, I, I was watching the tweets and um, I got feedback here and there. From what Alan has described, it looks like Ryan was kind of like sucked Mongas into their games. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those games probably for Mongas. I don't know you guys who've been on the pitch. It's one of those games where you say the rugby gods are just not smiling. 
for him, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. and then to Chad Undo, I, I, that one was also a bigger shocker because if I'm not mistaken, in the last two years, I think on, on aggregate, mo, mo, uh, hippos have gotten the better of, of buffaloes. Hippos have been on an upward tra trajectory. And uh, that was, uh, it was a low scoring game. It looked, uh, it looked to be a game uh, they were defending uh, very well, probably they were reduced to taking penalties and then Mungas carried the day. It was another surprise, not as shocking as uh, the one like the, Yeah, because, the, but it was still shocking all the, well, uh, all, all the same. So I would say, I think kudos to Buffaloes, surprise, surprise, because I think the talk, if I had, I was watching, uh, I was reading, I was reading uh, an article from Kawo Sports. I might like to mention them here. Well, you read I'm the sorry. article. <laughs> oh, sorry, let me, let me retract. I was reading, I was reading hey, an, an article, article somewhere and, and they quoted hey. Robert Seguia as saying, you know, he's, he's better prepared than all the other teams. I think, I think he was started, I don't know if I should say it. Just let, let me not put that down. They were ready. But, but they were ready very were early. Ready. Yes. So he was saying his team has never been this prepared so he can match even the top three sides. So, wow. Uh, I guess ah, it was humble. By that's good, He did. He talked big. I read that, and I was like, "A guy is going to damn water. Should be a bit careful. This guy seemed to be, you know, ah, perfect. ready." So, yeah. So the big one coming up soon. Um, the cops, the Betway cops, take on the heathens. I don't know if heathens are the sponsor, so I'll call them the heathens. The heathen, yeah. No yeah, sponsor. The heathens. So this game used to be characterized with uh, lots of aggression. Lots of hard hits, big tackles, blistering runs, and all that. I don't know if anything has changed recently because when you guys played that fixture, I uh, would always see guys, Chimono with Bisho, guys holding each other's collars and all that. It was really personal. It was really personal. Right now, I just see Mukwaya or, or yet <laughs> Mr. Sepans at the back getting the ball, uh, buying his razor dazzle through and all that. So I think it has a bit changed. Guys are just there to. Are they just there for the match? And do they really understand what the Lions Cup means? Because I mean, Heathens is the most successful club in Uganda. Yeah. And they're taking on Betway Cops, which is second in command. Yeah. So this is a huge clash in our league game. So I think this year's Lions Cup may be a bit different because both sides have restocked. They've even switched. It's like it's like us playing cards here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so he first have this joke, bang this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's bang this guy. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, okay, he may not. I don't know if seven guys will be back then. Yeah. No, I don't. Apparently, they're flying in from Dubai that day. So that very day. So it make sense for them. But if I want to play, what what happened? That's the thing. You haven't been you haven't been at practice for the last yeah. two weeks. Remember, the the, the the teams will have. What do you two mean, Michael Korach? I want to play for you. Then. Well, you go and watch on the sideline. You're yeah. not ready. Okay. Yeah. But but that's it. So basically, what do you guys think about the game? Personally, I think. Ah, do I even think? I don't know. This game. Uh, I don't. I just want to watch the game because I would I would be overstating if I say the game will be one from the from the forwards because both both teams. If Cobbs decides to show up with a very good backline, they can push in a number of scores. And the Heathens, you know, Heathens have this mentality of not losing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have players like Alex Mubiru, guys won the 2007 uh, championship and all that. Guys have that push on mentality. They they don't know how to lose. They just don't know how to lose. They they play rugby for 80 minutes and and yeah. So I have a feeling that game will still be won the pack, uh, because the platforms for both sides of runners really heavily depends on whether you're going forwards or backwards. Uh, I don't think there is any rugby player who wants to receive the ball on the back foot all the time. And by basing on the kind of uh, players that both of them are going to be missing because of the sevens team, uh, it then now comes and plays evenly with, with the park because uh, no team has lost a member of the park. Yeah, no team has lost yeah. any member of the park. Yeah. So, which means the forward lines, of course, and unfortunately for Cobbs, uh, Michael Toe can't face his old employers uh, because of uh, the injury that he got. Yeah, uh, the run game, yeah. Oh, he yeah. had yeah. happened. I didn't some, some, it, was, it, was a, it was a head, it was a head clash. Oh, yeah. So, what in yeah. what to it's, it's, it's actually, uh, I think he has a problem with his career. So, he's going to be out for, I think, a while. Oh. 
That's yeah. unfortunate. So well, it's, it's sad that now mm. he won't we won't have a cop. Oh, Mike think. can get well soon. Yes, yeah. get well soon, Mike. And we yeah. know the yeah. underwear's thing was was <laughs> yours. So where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so so the, it's still going to be one the pack, in particular, the lineouts, the set pieces. Well, what's I would say scrum down because scrum downs don't give you uh, too much impetus. They're going to be evenly matched in terms of technicality there. Yes. The lineups are going to uh, matter so much because both teams are going to try to play uh, territorial games. So if if you kick my twenty two and I can't pull the line out down, um, I'm really going to struggle. So the the, the scrum downs I don't see any team overpowering the, the other. Contest, yeah. I don't see I don't see any team overpowering the other. There's a strong number eight pick uh, from Scott. Which um, I think the cops are very very aware about, which is to be defended by either Oketayot or Asaba. Yeah. Well, yeah. So so he has ah, his so he has his work yeah. cut out for him. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to play number eight for Cobbs uh, at that point in time. They've been having Derek Tukwasiwe actually. Oh, okay. Derek, Derek has played at Chadondo before. Yeah, he played at Buffaloes and he yeah. Yeah. Usually his yeah. mates call him SP. For senior <laughs> senior player, <laughs> he, has, he has had a lot of concussions and oh, experience. Oh, I guess he's, he's a young man. Yeah, he's, really. Yeah, yeah, he's not really a vet. As the front say. rows, yeah. um, uh, again, even yeah. much because I mean, if you see Santos, <laughs> Santos. if you see Kanyanya, there, uh, Emma Biarhanga, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, against Kimboa and Sochi Vumbi and mm. Farajo Dugo. Dem, there's dem, going to dem. be there's it's going to be quite dem. a bit there's going to be quite a bit of, of aggression mm -hmm. happening right there. So uh the back lines are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, uh unfortunately heathens don't have Aaron of Foyros. I, I think he, he, he played a very, very pivotal game against the Pirates. He kept the back three guessing, he kept uh yeah. the heathens back line on the front foot all through the game. Because uh, Paris just could not know what he's going to do. He also had an intercept try in the middle of all that wow. against the Pirates. So um, last week they played against they played with Chris Lubanga there. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. So whom do you think they will put at? Um, what will be their halfback combinations? Probably Chris Lubanga and Paul Epilo. Paul Epilo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because. Usually, Heathens wants to bring experience to this game. Yeah. Usually, yes, they don't want yes, to guess. Yes. That's why I, I also see Alex Mubiru starting. I don't Probably. know. That guy will put in the shifts. He will do his his mm -hmm. levels at Shadow that night. Oh, I don't know. It would be bad that. for Kanyanya if, if yeah. Alex Mubiru really came on to start that. I, I think where he's coming from, I don't think Kanyanya is the kind of impact player that you want. Where Alex can actually give you that. He can come in and exactly. take the ship yes. from the bench. While I'm not sure if Kanyanya can give you that kind of motivation, He's especially if you're bit. behind, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. especially if you're behind, so true, true. In, in terms of tactical ability, I would want Kaya to start yeah. and get into the game early, as opposed to coming in at, at a shady time, whether you're ahead or behind, it is still a very, very intense time for uh, for him to come, he hasn't been trying to test like that, why Alex, you know, he's still going to be unfazed by whatever situation he finds on the field, so, yeah. Peter, what's your prediction? Uh, before we go to prediction, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. you, you made a statement earlier just uh, about how the game was played between these yes. teams in the past. I wanted to give you a historical perspective. This rivalry runs about 30 years, you know. Uh, I don't know where you are 30 years ago. But because I'm below 30, it's okay. I'm not even <laughs> <trying. I'm laughs> like, bro, I'm, I, 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 think, I think I was a teenager when, uh, pro probably about 12, 11, when I saw those first clashes in, in the 90s because at the time, Hithers was pr predominantly, uh, probably 99% white, a lot of expatriates on the team, and then the only team that could stand up to them at the time was Cops. So, you know, if you look at the history of the game of rugby, I'm not saying there was race issues here, but, you know, it's had that... It's a foreign sport, yeah. Yeah, so there was that black consciousness, so Cops mm -hmm. was like the team. So those mm -hmm. clashes were epic, if you're talking about <laughs> handbags. And, you know, and, and, you know a, a lot of the rules have changed, the laws have changed over the years. Because, you know, I think, I think at the time, sp they, 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 they never used to, the spear tackles were there. Um, 
if you're on the other side, the if you're on the other side of Iraq, they would stamp you. And he has had that rep reputation. Those those Caucasians playing that where since back in the it day. was not illegal. So they would, if you found yourself there, the the, the, the other side, side of, of that, that Adrian yeah. Kenya should tell you a story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you. He was there. He was about. He was a kid. He was 19, 18, You know. So uh, and then of course towards the end of the nineties, I think. These expatriates were growing older, and then the game was developing again after a yeah. long time of being defunct. So there are a lot of black people coming into the game, yeah. and then heathens, of course, changed color for lack of a better word. So, <laughs> and then I think I think that's about the time the legend over here joined the game from school. Uh, 99, 2000, 2001? 2000. 2000. Yes. Yeah, ask me yeah, where I was. Ask me where I was. <laughs> I won't. There <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, you're still walking in the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, stroller. Yeah. <laughs> so of course he went in and you know he's he's been through a lot of yes. those battles. So I, I remember one particular game, I think it was ninety-seven, ninety-eight, where I was when Makerere uh in peace was playing corps and I think you know university students who were taunting the corps players a lot. I remember there was a particular I forget his name, Kenyan engineering student. I forget his name. He was standing right next to me, very loud guys. You know, loud guy. You know, Kenyans are they can yeah. be very vocal. So I think he was heckling Ejum a lot. So Ejum ran off the pitch, literally running at me. I froze, and then he goes and punches this guy twice and runs back on pitch. The game wasn't stopped. It continued. That's how rugby was played. At that time, wow. you can imagine. I, 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 I think my heart stopped wow. literally. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds. Like, because like that till now, some guys would have gotten a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're so seeing a seven footer running. Some legends as well, but anyway, yeah, you're seeing a, a seven footer <laughs> running towards so, you. And I just wanted to, you to. I just wanted to capture the intensity of the of the games at that time. Of course, like I've said, a lot of water has passed under the bridge, but still. The biggest and oldest uh, rugby, rivalry. you know, rivalry is still Cops Heathens. I think it's the biggest one in East Africa, and uh, you always get your money's worth. Prediction? Well, I'm obviously very biased. I am, <laughs> I am a fan of Heathens, so yes. I would want them to win, but I have to also try and be objective. So I'm going to look at the teams on paper. Cops have... Um, Cops definitely, if you're going to look at the talent on both sides, Cops has definitely much talented squad. They have a deeper squad. Of course, they've been affected probably more than heathens uh, by the seven the, the, yeah, the seventh, yeah, thing in, in, in Dubai. So it has evened out things a bit. But on paper, I would still call it for Cops. Prediction, based on my bias, I would say heathens. How is that for sitting on the fence? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh, what I want to predict? What yeah. I want to predict? You know, I haven't understood this. I haven't understood this prediction. Yeah, mean, yeah. I'll give it to cops on paper. Yes, yeah. but heathens because I'm biased. Yes, <laughs> Peter. Wow, I'm sat on the fence. That's well, it, 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 but, uh, but then, uh, then again, it will be interesting to see how the Casotto, uh, innocent Gokto midfield plays out. I don't. I'm not sure who the cops are going to put at yeah, at twelve at yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, because Mugu that, that, that yeah. has been that has been changed. Why is a winger? Why is a winger? That, that, that no, has no, been changed. Sorry, what's the other? Manano. Well, um, because they have been changing. They have been. They have been changing that. They have been changing that. Oh, you got yeah, yeah, because they have been put Chibona at twelve. Because see the, the, yeah, because yeah. but then you see that Edgar yeah. Seruaji as well. So you could put okay, Seruaji at twelve. I wanted to. And maybe maybe Chibona at thirteen. Yeah, maybe Chibona at thirteen. Um. Let's see, because it's Manano who can also play at 13 wow. and, and bring him from, from the... Because what I was talking to some guys and I was like, Manano can play literally from 4 yeah. to 14. Thank you very wow. much. Yeah, he can... Yeah, he, and I'm not sure about his 9 though. <laughs> <And> his nine. <laughs> he can't kick a ball to, kick, to save his no, life. Yeah, yeah. No, well, um, but, but, but yeah, so, Man, so Manano, Shimono are that versatile. So there is that ability for them to switch around there. It would also be interesting to see who he plays at fullback this time because he's tried Mukwaya there, he's tried uh, Arena Itwe. Arena Itwe. Itwe. Wow. Boy. There's, he's your guy. Uh, yeah, he's your guy. Uh, there's, there's this kid who um, is just blossoming and, and let's hope we get a chance to see him at the fullback position. He's yeah, and guys, don't forget, Arena Itwe. To, Arena Itwe. Okay. don't forget to check out our shop www.kratosbrand.com forward slash shop 
check out for all your gym equipment, um, clothing, um, gym attire and sneakers, uh, rugby equipment, balls, soccer and all other gym equipment. Yeah. There's a game on Good Friday. Oh yes. This very this very yeah. weekend. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. Chadondo, 4 p.m. Chadondo, 4 p.m. Uh, we have the Warriors hosting uh, the Hippos. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So he comes, he comes back. I saw, back I saw, back. I saw an interesting. To, oh, he comes back to the scene of the crime. Yes. <laughs> For lack of a better word, I saw an interesting tagline on on one of the of that matchup. What was it again? Uh, was that about a slap? Can you slap a hippo? <laughs> can you slap a hippo? But if Kotsebuya loses this game, wow, he would have learned nothing and forgotten nothing from last weekend's. Oh, about the slap, um, a mongo has slapped from Ginger by, by ah. the rhinos. By the rhinos, rhinos. that's coming. You haven't seen the clip where Rosenberg is telling him where you get up. Oh, I, I saw it, but ah, I yeah, didn't yeah. see the build up. So, so he was he's slapped. He's like the so, biggest person in Uganda. Exactly, right? so, so he was slapped and he, yeah. we even had to have a medical break. And and he was down because of a slap. Yeah, but that guys, um, <laughs> it's been good having you. I've had both of these gentlemen. Prediction tomorrow. But, yeah, you ah. can throw it in there. Tomorrow's prediction. As you give your final remarks yes. and make your predictions. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Um, well, rap is back. Let's come down to the grounds and maintain your SOPs. But by and large, it's, it's going to be interesting. Go to uh, the streaming links, which you're going to share. Go to the UG Rugby fans on Facebook page or Twitter handle. We're going to share. We share links there for the live games. Friday, 4 p.m., Warriors Hippos. I'm going with Hippos for that one with about... Uh, 10 point difference because I saw the Warriors put up a strong fight against the Paris. I think they're also steadily getting yeah. um, into their momentum. About uh, Cobbs, the Betway Cobbs taking on the Heathens, I believe the Cobbs will win it by a full score. That's by more than seven points. No bonus point from any of you guys. Bonus points going yeah, that no, there'll, there'll be no bonus points. Points. bonus. There'll be no losing bonus. <laughs> <laughs> but seven points, you get the losing bonus. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, okay. so <laughs> the, I, I believe there's going to be a losing bonus point. I'm going to come back to you shortly. Mm -hmm. Your final remarks. Your uh, um, prediction and final remarks. Okay, prediction. Uh, I'll go with Soki. Yes, uh, he pose probably by a score. S by one score. Probably five or seven points. And then... Um, my closing remarks, I would like to wish you a happy Easter holidays, stay safe, uh, follow the SOPs, and keep it locked on, Kratos Rugby. Ah, sure. Do you have an Easter song you'd like to sing? Any song you, remember I, you have from... I have no skills in that department. Heroes, <laughs> heroes, heroes from the dead, heroes, heroes. heroes. You see, we are the guys who used to go to We are guys used to go to church. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm so did I? So that's cool. me. Just, yeah. <laughs> Ah, but it's okay. Uh, your final remarks as we end this point. Uh, well, it has been an exciting uh, opening phase of the season. Remember, it's one leg. So each game is like a cup. It's like close to like a cup competition. You lose one game and it's yeah. out of the ring. It's a wrap. So uh, rugby is exciting. It's, it's interesting. And for the guys, again, uh, put out your best performances. One of the match medals will come. So, but let's celebrate from inside. And I keep saying, Let's celebrate uh, from within because um, that's that's what the rugby is about. Let's take the celebration. Let's enjoy the game. Let's play the game. Let's keep safe, and let's get vaccinated if you can. I'm hoping mm. to actually find a spot where I can get my job. Yep. So that yeah, let's let's, let's beat Corona to its game. Amazing. Otherwise, happy Easter and have fun and let's let's roll. Rugby is here. Aye. Cheers, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. It's been a pleasure hosting these two gentlemen. I've learned a lot, I must confess, and you guys, you haven't asked me about the prediction for the Cops no, Heathens game. I uh, Well, uh, my Both prediction is, is tomorrow. yeah. tomorrow's game, I'll definitely give it to Ginger Hippos because they are coming right off some wrongs. Yeah. But the Cops Heathens game, my prediction is beautiful rugby. Thank you very much, Dungu Joseph. What prediction is that? Happy Easter. See you. You've just... Kufa Nada. Sitting on uh, <laughs>